Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, we've been talking a little bit about, a lot about estate planning, and we're going to get into the trust thing. Let me finish out with annuities for you real quick. So again, that first world we talked about was the fixed annuity and things like savings, checking, money markets, savings bonds, treasuries. All of those fit in that safe world where you're getting basically some guarantees and you know what you got as far as interest go. And again, unfortunately, that typically is not enough to stay ahead of inflation and taxes, which means the purchasing power is going down. So we look at the stock market where uh, historically we've been able to, in fact, stay ahead of inflation and taxes. Uh, again, we talked about variable annuities. And when it comes to annuities, if you've had any kind of, I don't know, you know, what it's the broad range of experience out there probably with regard to annuities. If you've heard bad things about annuities, typically it's about variable annuities. And again, it goes back to the fees. And if I'm investing in the market, I'm reducing my, my net returns if I'm paying additional fees. So we want to do that. And then the second part, of course, with variable annuities is you're also limited. It's like a 401k. 401ks, you, got, you, know, you can put more money in compared to an IRA, which is going to give you more tax deferral, which can be excellent, right? Good, so especially higher the income, the more beneficial this is going to be. Uh, the next piece is, uh, with regard to the uh, 401ks is you may be getting some matching from an employer. That's free money, so you definitely want to take advantage of that. But then we get into the downside, and the downside of 401k is you're limited to some, you know, to a small basket of, of uh, investments that you can invest in there. And typically, you know, that might be as little as 10, 20, 30 uh, different investments is all that you have available compared to the hundreds and maybe thousands that are outside of that. So what we want to look at here uh, just, this is the same with a variable annuity. A variable annuity has a limited amount of investment options that you can invest in within that variable annuity. So that's another downside besides that of the, uh, the excess fees. So one of the things is you, you know how we, we'll, we'll talk about investing on another, another time. We've talked about it a number of times here, but this is one of those areas. Now fixed index annuities, this is where this can come in. There was some recent, so the Wharton School of Business, in fact, put out a, a white paper, and there's another one coming out, uh, I think, recently here from uh, Roger Ibbotson. Uh, and this has to do with uh, fixed index annuities being paired with stocks as a means of getting a better return and, and less volatility than you might with stocks and bonds. So this is an area we utilize uh, fixed index annuity sometimes with, uh, with regard to our investment planning as well. Now fixed index annuity, now we're getting all the guarantees, in other words the safety, where principal is guaranteed, uh, we don't have to worry about losing any money in it. Uh, and then with those paired with that though, instead of just a fixed amount, it's tied to an indice such as the S&P 500 index, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, Barclays Aggregate Bond Index, and there's a number of other uh, volatility controlling uh, indices that have come out in recent years that help, and these are uncapped strategies. By the way, if you're looking at fixed index annuities, this is real important to understand. Fixed index annuities, you want an uncapped, this is a critical in fact, uncapped. If it's capped, it's going to greatly limit your, your returns, probably down in the 2 to 3 percent a year range, and now you might as well just have a fixed guarantee as opposed to that. So an uncapped strategy is real important. There's some other options on those too. So fixed index annuities, now I've got addition, uh, you know, historically those do in fact stay ahead of inflation and taxes as well. So sometimes pairing all these together. So this is a brief overview of annuities. There are other types, as I mentioned, immediate annuities and other, th other types of annuities that can be utilized uh, with regard to planning. Now comes, we're going to talk about trust. All right, so Russ, with trust, we got all these different kinds of trust, but let's start with the revocable, you know, what we, the basics, the five essential documents we talk about, and that being a revocable uh, living trust, and how someone setting up a trust, how they can you do IRAs as a way of protection, but also how an annuity can work in terms of uh, helping control taxes down the road with, uh, with withdrawals. Well, the, the revocable trust is a trust that you would set up during your life in order to be able to transition assets at your death without going through a probate administrative proceeding. Um, when it comes to revocable trusts, typically in order to set those up, you would want to make sure that the assets you own are either owned by the trust or that the trust is the beneficiary at your death. And I guess with an annuity, it really doesn't make a difference whether the trust owns the annuity while you're living or the trust is the beneficiary of the annuity at your death. The trust from an income tax standpoint just looks through to you. So whatever tax attributes the annuity gives you will be the same, whether it's owned by the trust or owned by you. 
Um, and that's something that, that people don't necessarily realize is that when you set these up, you want to make sure that mm -hmm. the trust is, is part of that process by being beneficiary or owner. You know, you, one of the things we talked about, break, and, I, and I'm going to come back to as well, um, I gave you a brief overview of the types of annuities as an example. And uh, one of those, but an annuity in, is understanding what an annuity is. So an annuity can be a stream of payments, and that's the way it's many times thought of, in particular in legal circles. This is an area of where people can be paid out for different settlements and that. Pensions, the form of an annuity payment. But annuities can also be used in a tax deferred, not only tax deferred, but also deferring as far as the investment or income piece, just like you would investing in a portfolio, where you can just put the money in there, grow it safely, and then at some future point, you can take income. Now, that income doesn't have to be that guaranteed income set for life pension type thing. It could also just be, well, I'm just going to take a little out here or a little out there for, you know, to supplement my income. Or I might say I want to start at one point, and this is one of the advantages with uh, utilizing and, and understanding how annuities work. I could set that income up for $1,000 a month and then later make it 2000 or 5000 or, you know, whatever that is, according to the amount of money that I've got in there, I can change, in other words, my income income stream that I'm taking from that. And if I have other types of things, I can pair them together, which gives me tax and investment options that help me uh, prolong how long my money lasts. So annuities can be used for guarantees to make sure you never run out of money, but they can also be used just as an investment vehicle uh, paired, like I said, with stocks in, uh, in a portfolio to give us a better result. Now. Now that I have done my part, Russ, <laughs> what is a trust? <laughs> Let's talk about a very basic uh, definition here. Yeah. A trust is a document you create in order to hold assets. Um, and the type of trust you create will dictate how the taxation is handled with the trust. Um, so think of a trust as kind of a bucket. And you put someone in charge of the bucket. That's your trustee. And you put stuff in the bucket. That's funding the trust. And then the trust itself has instructions to the trustee. This is what you're supposed to do with these assets. You can make yourself the beneficiary during your life, which is how revocable trusts are set up. Or you can make someone else the beneficiary during your life, which is how irrevocable trusts usually are set up. Or you can have it so that the trust is your benefit, your benefit from it during your life. And then when you pass, someone else benefits from it. But it's a way of being able to transition assets and control those assets for the benefit of the beneficiary. Um, where annuities do help with trust planning is the fact that trusts are taxed at different rates than individuals when it comes to income tax. So uh, depending on the type of trust. Now a revocable trust gets taxed at the individual rate because the IRS says it's not a separate tax paying entity. There are certain irrevocable trusts that are the same way. They're called grantor trusts, where they're just taxed to the individual. But most of the trusts that we're setting up for estate planning happen at death, and they're irrevocable, and we're doing it so we can protect those assets from the beneficiary and the beneficiary's creditors. So they are separate tax reporting entities, which means they have their own income tax rates. And when you have your own income tax rates, you have to worry about taxable income to the trust. And the great thing about annuities is that you can turn on and off that taxable income when it's needed. Whereas a typical investment like stock bond portfolio, whatever income is earned, that's going to be reported to the trust regardless of whether or not the trust needs it. With an annuity, you can pretty much decide whether or not you want to turn that on or off. So that's where it comes into play. And some so, of this, go ahead. Yeah. Well, what you're looking at with a trust, think in terms of the same as a corporation. So mm -hmm. as Russ was just saying, initially, a revocable trust is an example. It's still operate. You, you still file your taxes the same. It doesn't. There's no separate return filed for the trust. It's operating under your uh, social security number, your tax ID number. So from that standpoint, it really doesn't change how you do your day to day or how you file taxes or or impact your taxes in any way. However, now, when it becomes irrevocable, or if you set up an, uh, an irrevocable, so if someone passes, we'll go with this one, because this is the more common one that we, we deal with. Uh, someone passes, and now the trust becomes irrevocable, okay, or, le or, or maybe half in a, in a, if it's a, if it's a uh, couple. And now we're going to get a new tax ID number. So we're literally going to go and get a, a 
a, like a, we would with a setting up a corporation. We're going to get a new tax ID number, and that's going to become now a separate entity that exists that now has to pay its own taxes, has, it, uh, has to file a tax return. Okay, now for a couple or whoever your, your beneficiary might be is going to be in charge, whoever you're putting in charge of that trust when you're gone, they're the ones that will still have to do that. They'll just, you know, in filing their, their regular taxes, they're going to file this uh, tax return for the trust. Now, trust, re trust tax rates, much like corporate tax rates then, are typically higher than individual tax rates. So when it comes into planning uh, for taking income from that later, if we've got a bunch of assets in there that are generating a bunch of income, and we have to either pay it to the, the trust then has to either pay the tax on that, and that's gonna, as I said, be a higher tax, or they have to pass it through to the beneficiaries who then receive that as income on their tax returns and have to pay tax on it at that time themselves. Now, the problem, and this is one of the, well, the problem being that if we're generating a more income than we really want to take out, we don't necessarily want to have to keep paying tax on it and then pay it again when it's distributed. So one of the things we want to look at instead is we can utilize annuities in a trust. So this is how these two can come together. Now if I put that money, those investment dollars in an, in an annuity, now what I've done is I've got tax deferral. So now I can take out just the amount of income I need that I want to pass through, say, to the beneficiaries where I can control how much tax is going to get paid and I can let it grow tax deferred in that method. So that's just one strategy that where we can utilize annuities and trusts together to get a, a better result. Okay, we're going to take another break, but when we come back, and by the way, I haven't said this yet this morning, first 10 callers to my office, we're going to get into that when I come back from the break, first 10 callers to the office will give you an opportunity to get a review of your estate plan in addition to retirement income analysis, a comprehensive financial plan done at no charge. So join us here, and we'll show you how to get, take advantage of that. First, a quick break, and we'll be right back on the Retirement Report.